Reverend clergy, our distinguished guests, my fellow citizens, I am a few months older than our illustrious visitor, and I am and all who are in my category are literally amazed at the trim athletic figure who has come to be among us. A distinguished Washington lawyer who has reached my years said the other day that when I wake up in the morning, if something is not hurting, I'm scared I'm dead. <laughs> but you have revealed to us an incredible resiliency, and we honor you for that. This day and this occasion under these circumstances would be utterly impossible except for the truth that there is a God who presides over the affairs of history, who vetoes the schemes of evil men, and who decrees that truth crushed to earth must rise again. Let it be said once again, boldly and boldly, both to celebrate our own deliverance in this, in this country and as an act of penance this nation must help to keep sanctions intact and in force until the last foul vestige of the ugly system of apartheid is gone. I have preached in South Africa. I was born in the American South. It is no secret when I speak about fruits, meat for repentance, and I blush to say it, that our nation, by precept and example, taught South Africa the structures of apartheid. It is my distinguished pleasure today to present the true leader of South Africa. Years ago, South African blacks carried me to Chapman's Peak overlooking Robbins Island. And with awe in their voices, they pointed out that that was the place where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned. For them and for us, it was a hallowed place, a shrine made so by his presence there. I present to you today the true leader of South Africa, certified by his own courage and integrity, ratified by the blood of countless black Africans slaughtered in freedom's cause, and confirmed by people of decency everywhere. I take great pleasure in presenting to you the moral leader of the world. The standard bearer of liberty's cause, the drum major in the music of freedom, I present to you